recording. Okay, welcome to Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is take a tour around uh, your interface and seeing all the different bells and whistles that Photoshop has. Uh, hopefully you have updated to Photoshop 2020 and you are using the most recent version. Usually your most recent stuff will come up on the screen and you can see I've been working at several different assignments for uh, digital drawing. Um, so while we're on Photoshop, file and let's just go to new. We're going to open up a new one that you have a series of selections that you can look at. So for example, illustration, print, photo, etc. Film and video is handy, but sometimes I run into some aspect ratio issues uh, and they can be very, very large files sometimes. So let's just go to uh, print for now and we'll do tabloid. Notice it says 300 dpi. Um, I will accept 300 to 350 dpi and pixels per square inch. This is how many dots are in a square inch. And I'm going to approach Photoshop as if you've never used it before, just to kind of give everybody uh, the same starting point. We have some folks in the class that have used Photoshop before, and we have some folks that have not really used Photoshop before. So we're just gonna approach it with a all hands on deck kind of first tour. 11 inches, you can always select different modes uh, here as well, or different points of value. RGB, CMYK, etc. One is usually for the internet, one is usually for print. You also have this option for grayscale. Just leave the 8 bit alone for now, and you could always choose a different background color. Um, as you start working, you could change these uh, in the file later, and it's not too big of a deal. So we can start with white, and that's fine. Let's just hit go. Um, looking at the screen way in the bottom, you can see that this says 25%. Uh, that means that your s actual size is now 100%. So you can see I've got a fairly big brush. So just by clicking Command minus and Command plus, I can kind of zoom in and zoom out. Now there's five different ways usually, or a thousand different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. Uh, and you really just kind of learn how to use this the way you want to use it. It's just like using paint. You're going to paint with it differently than anybody else. And you might use the software a little differently like anyone else. You do have a uh, toolbar over here at the top. And that toolbar at the top will change as you negotiate these different uh, icons here on the left hand side. So for example, if I were to go to eraser, you could see that my top toolbar actually changed. And each one of those toolbar icons uh, will be reflective of those changes. So we have uh, arrows where you're selecting. You do have the marquee. And if you hold these down, you'll get different options. So usually I like to stay on the rectangular until I know what I'm going to be doing with that. Up top, you can actually combine shapes, take away the top part, take away the intersecting. That's kind of handy. It used to be just an illustrator, and now it's here in Photoshop as well. The lasso tool is a lot of fun to work with. I sometimes use it even to draw with. You'll notice that there's all kinds of different options and don't get too overwhelmed at first. Uh, take one thing at a time as we start working with it. You do have a magic wand uh, and as you hover there's a little uh, arrow and that means there's more selections. Notice that the W is indicative of a shortcut. So if I go down here to brush for example and I look at that shortcut you will see B and sometimes that's a nice one to have handy. You have an eyedropper tool, a crop tool, the eraser tool, clone tool. When you go here this is a history brush tool, it restores parts of an image to an earlier state um, and sometimes you can just do undo because you're going back and you're editing it. Paint bucket, which also has a gradient, and then a blur tool. This can get kind of draggy and laggy, so just watch out for the blurs and the, the um, smudges. The dodge tool is very uh, useful, especially when you start altering some of the brights and the shadows, because if you hold on this, you'll also get the burn tool, and that will take things down. Dodge and burn are both photo terms from dealing with film and trying to develop film and paper and working with negatives. You would dodge the light, or you would burn the paper with more light, so that's where that term comes from. As we come down in here, this is more of a vector tool, uh, the pen tool. That can get a little tricky as you're starting to intersect. Um, I tend to use Illustrator when I need a pen tool versus Photoshop, but it will be really something that you might play with later on. Just know that if you're trying to draw something for the first time and handle it with pixels, you really want to use the brush tool. And as you approach the brush tool, you've got pencils in there, mixers, and I'm going to show you how to load a brush set uh, in a second tutorial later on. You also have type shapes, 
path select and like I said anything from the pen and the path select and as you're coming down to shapes those are really dealing with a different ball game so try to stay north of those for now. When I'm on the pencil tool, um, you can draw anything you'd really like. You do have this option to kind of manage a couple of set of colors, and those colors can flip flop, which is nice. Or you can go to default, black and white, totally doable. And as you're trying to control the shapes of these, you could select up in here in the menu to change your size, or you can get pretty handy with some of the shortcuts. And on a Mac, I'm looking at the bracket left and the bracket right. And this is wonderful because now I've got no lag whatsoever. <laughs> I've been waiting for an adapter to show up because I had a lag on an old MacBook Air and I had to get a new computer and a new adapter. But thus is the pain that we, we artists go for, especially when we're working with technology. Now you'll notice I tried to delete that background and I, I really can't until I kind of give myself another layer to work with. Now I have a transparent layer and that's kind of playful as well. So now I'll fill it with black. Layers is the window you always want to have open, as is possibly history. History can come in handy when you're trying to make a few steps back, but as a speed painter with, with Photoshop and as an illustrator, sometimes history can be cumbersome and you just really want to move forward. You don't want to get stuck into the whole back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, nonstop, and you just want to move forward. So this is there and this is available, and you might have to check its settings for history. If I go into the uh, performance, you will notice that I have uh, different settings that come up and you'll see that I have 50 history states and you can actually bump that up. I usually do about 100 just in case. Now the second you close that file, just know that it rewrites history. Or if you make a move and you create a second timeline in history, you can't go back to the first timeline. You have to go even further back and it's kind of a, a funny little thing, but you'll get the hang of it. All of these menu bars can be accessed all these little windows popped up over here and we have a, an array of windows. That's usually where I'm spending time. I'm also spending time in image, adjust, rotations. There's also shortcuts for those for transform tools, edit, transform tools. And we're going to cover each one of these uh, within the different assignments to kind of get you used to how to work with those. But this is the gist of what we have and where we're going. Um, you also have the color that comes up right away. And as you explore color, you have swatches, gradients, patterns, and we have uh, Adobe Color, which is a wonderful tool and extension to be used as well. You'll notice that under the brushes, which I can also access under Window, just remember there's a lot of ways to do the same thing in Photoshop, that when I access the brushes, here and the brush settings here, I've actually put in a, an insert called Brushbox. This is an extension that I paid for. Um, and Photoshop, you can always add these uh, extensions to, and you could put new brushes in, and you can assemble new swatches and textures, and it's kind of this nice little database. And it's the industry standard when it comes to producing a lot of images. But things are changing every day, and the second you know you think you got Photoshop down, there's probably a new program. Art Studio Pro runs for about $30 or $20 flat on a computer and it's very similar to Photoshop. Um, even my husband uses it and he's a professional illustrator for, for many, many decades and he loves it. You can shrink these windows at any given time and even if they're gone, boop, you can still bring them back simply by going into window, pop open your brushes again and you'll see that that will immediately kick back in. So let's say we're going to just doodle something on here right away. And let's pull that layers window up again. There was a shortcut as well. And as I look at the layers, here's the beauty of Photoshop. I can have a lot of layers. I can have as many layers as I want. I can even select all those layers and I can group them into folders and then I can expand those folders. That's helpful. These are a way to organize layers. And if you can, think about each one of these as being a transparent piece of glass. And on that piece of glass, you can do whatever you like on that. And you can move it around. So let's make our background white again. I'm gonna click on layer two. And on layer two, I'm actually gonna approach a hard pressure size brush, and I could draw whatever I want. Now, if I hit Command Z, it's gone. So let's play with the very first tool in Photoshop. Up here, there's a little butterfly. 
and there's vertical, horizontal. This is a symmetry tool and it can have a, a nice little impact. Now, if you're working on Procreate, Procreate has the same uh, tool. You just have to hunt and find it. So if you feel like you want to draw this on Procreate and then scan it in, you can. So as I'm working with this, I can tell that that is on and whatever I do on one side will happen on the other. And that's kind of fun. The very first assignment I have specked out for you folks is dealing with asymmetry and symmetry. So you have to combine the two. And as you're creating something creative and unique, part of it will be symmetrical. You decide if you want vertical or horizontal, and part of it will be asymmetrical. So the second you want to change this and not be in symmetry anymore, all you have to do is click on the next layer and then turn this off. And now it's gone. And now you can access this as an asymmetrical object. That's gonna be the first extent of our lesson. Um, you took a tour of Photoshop, you kind of know where to find your brushes and how to make some layers, and then the symmetry tool, and we're gonna give you a little bit of a chance to do some free drawing on this. The very first assignment, maybe find an animal, find some plants, do post those pictures up in the discussion board, because that cre creates an atmosphere for participation. And as we discussed, participation has a lot to do with your attendance. Um, but you get to really be more creative and take charge of this. Please do see the student example, and I will be working on a similar Similar. Um, I will show you what that kind of looks like as I open up my Fox and Fig document. Here you can see where I've approached my Fox and Fig and I have different things on different layers like ribbons and the bottom. I got the big old frame. The fox is on his own entire layer. The fig on the left and the figs on the right. And I save this as a Photoshop file. Please note, if you save this as a JPEG file, you will flatten everything and you're not done working on it yet. So you really want to do file, save as, make sure where you're saving it on your computer. I'm going to stick it in my demos, keep the layers box checked and hit save. It says, do you want to replace it? It's the same thing, I haven't touched it. Sure, it's fine, hit okay. And one last thing I want to show you is when you go to image and image size, here is where we can revisit what the scale was of the project. And you can tell I'm 35 megabytes, I'm 3,500 pixels, 10 by 10 inches, and a 350 DPI. So I know I'm within my parameters until I'm ready to actually submit this. When it is time to submit, you will save the Photoshop file to Dropbox so that you always have that, just in case we need to access those layers. And then you could sh you could flatten this and save this as a JPEG and submit that into Blackboard when it's due. I hope this helps. Um, I will create a second tutorial that is talking about values and coloring, uh, so stay tuned for that one.